A friend of mine likes to hike in the fall and came across a crop of maitake mushrooms. These mushrooms have been used medicinally in Japan and China for thousands of years and have healing properties that science is just now uncovering. In this video, I will give you more information on this amazing mushroom as well as a tasty fermentation recipe to help you enjoy its full benefits. More right after this. In Japan, maitake means dancing mushroom. It is believed that this name was given because the people danced with joy when they discovered their incredible healing powers. These mushrooms are native to Japan, China, and North America, and while they have been used medicinally in Japan and China for thousands of years, they have only become popular in the U.S. in the last 20 years. Maitake mushrooms are considered to be a type of adaptogen. Adaptogens help the body with balancing or correcting mental and physical imbalances. Maitake mushrooms are rich in antioxidants, beta-glucans, vitamins B and C, copper, potassium, fiber, minerals, and amino acids. Laboratory tests suggest that these mushrooms can help fight cancer, lower cholesterol, and improve insulin resistance. The mushroom may also be beneficial in treating cold and flu viruses, high and low blood pressure, improving immune function, and reducing the effects of chemotherapy. Whole maitake mushrooms can be incorporated into your diet by adding to stir fries, salads, pasta, omelets, pizza, or anything else you could think of. It can also be found as a liquid or powdered supplement at some health food stores. As with any supplementation regimen, check with your doctor before starting and if you experience any ill effects. Unless picked very fresh, Mushrooms can be very difficult to digest, so it is suggested to cook them to improve the digestibility. Fermentation is another great way to improve the digestibility of certain foods, as well as make their nutritional benefits more bioavailable to your body. Today, I'm going to share with you a recipe I whipped up to ferment these mushrooms. Fermenting raw mushrooms can result in a poor texture, so first, I'm going to boil the mushrooms. Boiling changes the texture of the mushroom, making them better able to hold up to submersion in the brine fluid for fermentation. Fill a pot with filtered or spring water and set on the stove to boil at medium heat. When the water comes to a gentle boil, add the mushrooms, stir and cover them. Continue boiling for 20 minutes, stirring occasionally. When the time is up, strain out the mushrooms and save the broth. The broth is loaded with healthy stuff and earthy flavor which we don't want to lose. We will be using this as the base for the fermentation brine. Rinse the mushrooms with cold filtered water to cool them off and stop them from cooking. The brine for any fermentation should be between 68 and 85 degrees Fahrenheit. If your brine temperature is too hot, let it sit until it cools down. The broth is now cooled down enough, so it's time to start preparing the fermentation. Using a kitchen scale, zero out the weight of the fermentation jar. Then, add the mushrooms to the jar to get their weight. Pour in enough water to cover the mushrooms. This won't necessarily fill the jar, and that's okay. Make a note of the total weight here. It will be important for the next steps. You may be wondering why I'm weighing the mushrooms and the water. For proper fermentation, we need to reach a certain concentration of salt in the brine. Since the mushrooms are mostly water, we have to take its water content into account when calculating how much salt is needed to get the overall mixture to the correct concentration. Otherwise, your salt concentration may be too low to ensure a proper environment for lacto-fermentation. Now that you have the total weight, carefully pour out the water into a mixing bowl or cup. Pour the mushrooms into a separate container, leaving the mason jar empty. I wish there was an easier way to do this, but I haven't found one. Based on my total weight of 842 grams and a desired salt concentration of 2.5%, I calculated the amount of salt needed to be 21.05 grams. I use Himalayan sea salt, which is considered to be one of the best salts to use for fermentation. Don't use iodized table salt. The iodine will kill the helpful bacteria we are trying to foster. 
Add the salt to the mushroom broth and stir until completely dissolved. To the jar, I add one dried red chili pepper, one tablespoon of minced garlic, a pinch of whole black peppercorns, and finally, a quarter cup of starter brine. This is not a wild fermentation where the bacteria naturally present on the vegetable is used for fermentation. Because we boiled the mushrooms, there's no natural bacteria left. Beneficial bacteria has to be added back into the mix in order to get the fermentation process going. This method of lacto-fermentation is referred to as an heirloom fermentation. If you don't have any brine from a previous ferment, you can buy freeze-dried fermentation starter online. Next, add the mushrooms to the jar and fill with brine. Make sure to cover the mushrooms completely. This is critically important to prevent mold growth, which will ruin the ferment. Weigh down the mushrooms to keep them under the brine. You can use glass or ceramic weights made for your fermenting jars. For my ferment, I am using something different called the Visco Disc Canning Buddies. I find them to be a bit more effective at holding my veggies under the brine, but they have their drawbacks too. If you want to check them out, there is a link in the comments below. Finally, I cap my jar with an airtight lid. I like to use lids designed specifically for fermentation in wide mouth mason jars. These lids release pent up pressure allowing oxygen to escape and preventing it from re-entering. If you aren't using this type of lid, any airtight lid will do, but make sure to open it slightly every day to let some of the pressure be released. Otherwise, your jar could explode. Another option is a lid with an airlock. These use water to allow gases to escape and not re-enter. A link to the lids I use are in the comments below. Well, that's it. The only thing left is to let nature take its course. Heirloom ferments tend to finish much more quickly than wild ferments, so I will start checking them in about three days to see how it's going. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe to my channel if you wish to continue seeing quality content that hits you right in the gut.